Hi, this is Jeff Blair from ISA St. Louis section. Today I'll take a few minutes to describe how buoyancy level works. In my full-time role, I'm the offer manager for level with Schneider Electric. I want to take just another minute to relay that this material is mine unless I specifically cite or quote a source. This presentation does not necessarily represent the thoughts and views of ISA or Schneider Electric. There are no warranties or other offers implied by this presentation. Process equipment and instrumentation should be installed, operated, serviced, and maintained by qualified personnel. No responsibility is assumed by ISA or Schneider Electric for any consequences arising from the use of this material. I admit I watch Shark Tank, and I think Mark Cuban explains it well. When we start to describe instrumentation concepts and how they work, it's easy to get into technical details and get a long, drawn-out video. For this video, I'm going to cover the basics quickly. I'll explain a bit more in another follow-on video. At its simplest, a buoyancy instrument is a scale, just like your bathroom scale or the scale you use in the doctor's office. It measures the force placed upon it. That force is the weight of an attached displacer. By knowing the force or weight of the displacer, we can infer liquid level. I'll show you how that's done in just a minute. But first to explain buoyancy, I'm going to use DP level or, or hydrostatic level as an example. DP level remains the most commonly used process liquid level measurement. But this DP cell is actually not measuring level. It's measuring pressure, and we can infer level off of the pressure. As you see in the example, at our low range value, we're measuring 16 inches of water. and That's our pressure measurement. When we can convert that into 20 yardstick inches of level, at our upper range value, we're measuring 176 inches of water as a pressure measurement, and then we're inferring the actual level 200 yardstick inches off of that. With buoyancy, it's the same concept as DP level. The instrument measures the buoyant force or weight of a displacer. We're actually measuring the force or weight and we're inferring the level off of the force or weight of this displacer. In this example, when we see the displacer is lightest at 28 ounces, we have a level of 157 inches. At the lower level, we're set up to measure 53 ounces, which converts to zero inches. By the way, the displacer isn't afloat. I've heard it called that before. The displacer remains stationary and it doesn't float. If you're thinking it's strange that the lower level, I mentioned before, we actually have a heavier weight, uh, you're not alone. It looks a little odd that we have 53 ounces at the lower weight, but I'll explain it. It's heavy because when you look at the displacer, it's hanging in air here. There actually is no level. We're at 0% or 0 inches. The level, the liquid is actually, you know, just below the displacer here. So since there's no buoyant force to make the, this displacer feel lighter, it's hanging in air, and it appears to be, to the instrument, it appears to be at its heaviest, 53 ounces here. At 50% level, or 12 milliamps, we'll measure 40 ounces or 78 inches. And we can see the, the liquid level is actually rising. So it's providing more buoyant force to make the displacer appear lighter. And finally, when we get to the upper range value, 100%, 20 milliamps, we see 28 ounces or 157 inches. The liquid is providing more buoyant force to the displacer, so it's, it's at its lightest here. The benefits of buoyancy are is it's very good for high temperatures and pressures. It's easier to make an interface measurement with buoyancy than it is with some instruments like guided wave radar. With buoyancy, you don't need two separate individual levels or rag layers to measure interface. And this technology has been around since Archimedes' time, so it's a proven method of measuring liquid level. Thank you for your time. If you have any questions or feedback, I encourage you to leave a note in uh, the comments section here where the video is posted, and I will uh, check up on those and try and answer your questions as quickly as possible. But again, thank you very much.